We now present For the Record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally. Another week here in Wisconsin means another presidential campaign visit. Former President Donald Trump flew into Racine holding a rally downtown. Now, the 90 minute rally addressed his concerns, reported concerns, calling Milwaukee a horrible city, and addressed a significant portion of it to immigration. I love Milwaukee. I was the one that picked Milwaukee, I have to tell you. I was the one that picked it. These lying people that they say, oh, he doesn't like Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. I said, you got to fix the crime. We all know that. You got to make sure the election's honest. But I'm the one that picked Milwaukee, and uh, the Democrats or the radical left lunatics, as I call them, what they say is uh, just so terrible. They lie, lie, lie. Our country is under invasion. We should not be talking amnesty. We should be talking about stopping the invasion instead. This is an invasion of our country. We have to seal the border. We have to let people come into our country, but they have to come in legally. We have to send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home where they belong. We have no choice. Now, the former president's rally comes at a key point here in the campaign. We will have that first presidential debate coming up this week. And it also comes at a key area of the state in Racine. We asked Assembly Minority Leader and Racine Area State Rep Greta Neubauer about what Racine means to the state politically. Well, I think the fact that Donald Trump is in Racine and, and President Joe Biden was in Mount Pleasant uh, about a month ago demonstrates that Racine is going to be critically important in this election. We know that turnout in this community is essential. Racine County is always a battleground, and all of us here in this part of the state understand that we will help decide the future president, and we are fired up for Joe Biden. Now, we also spoke with Congressman Brian Stile about what Republican politics looks like heading into the summer campaign season. Here's more from that conversation. Um, so we're in southeastern Wisconsin, right? Um, we often talk about, you know, the wow counties for Republicans, Milwaukee for Democrats. We're here in Racine County. What kind of uh, role does that play in Wisconsin politics? W Racine and Kenosha County together are really the swing area of the state. And so who comes out of here victorious at the end of the day usually wins statewide. And so it's exciting to have the president here uh, on the lakeshore, downtown Racine, the opportunity to speak directly to voters, unfiltered uh, by any media forum, having that conversation about what we need to do to get our country back on track. Uh, what are we expecting to hear from the speech? What should voters take away from it? I think you're going to hear him cover a lot of topics, but I think the two that people need to listen into in particular is how we can get inflation under control and bring down the cost of living. Everything's 20% more expensive, roughly, than when President Biden took office. People are trying to move from paying the rent to paying the mortgage or finding it harder and harder. Cars are more expensive, insurance, grocery bills, gas bills. And so we have a policy to bring that down and deal with the real reckless spending out of the Biden administration. The other is the need to secure the U.S.-Mexico border. The failure to secure the border by President Biden has had real impacts here in the state of Wisconsin. Everything from fentanyl coming across the border to the, the challenges that we see, <clears throat> the challenges that we see with the burden placed on a lot of the uh, community resources. Take the city of Whitewater, a city of about 15,000 people, that is about 1,000 migrants. It's a huge burden on our first responders and on the school district. President Biden continues to allow the U.S.-Mexico border to remain unsecured. We have an opportunity to return to the policies of President Trump and secure the U.S.-Mexico border. It's so actually on immigration. We've seen uh, Biden make the announcement uh, to allow undocumented spouses to receive that permanent residency. It sounds like Democrats are, you know, trying to win on that issue of immigration. Is that something Republicans would be concerned about at all? I think what you see is President Biden flip-flopping every given week as to whether or not he's di discussing securing the border or whether or not he's discussing other policies. The answer here is a need to secure the U.S.-Mexico border. President Biden has policies that he could implement today, everything from re in reinstating stay in Mexico, restarting border wall construction, ending abuse of the parole system, ending catch and release. The president refuses to enact those policies that would secure the U.S.-Mexico border because he has an agenda where he wants individuals to illegally enter the United States. It's incredibly dangerous to those individuals that come, and it places a real challenge here on communities across Wisconsin, across the country. So in southeastern Wisconsin here, uh, we've also talked about Foxconn. We've seen a little give and take between Republicans and Democrats. Um, what's that legacy like, especially for Republicans? It was a crown jewel for Trump. 
I think it's a great opportunity that Microsoft is coming to that, that site. They wouldn't be here but for the work that others have done, Scott Walker and others who are involved in that process. And so at the end of the day, anytime you get a major private sector investment in your community that's creating jobs, that's something to celebrate. I think we should continue to work to bring big investment here into the state of Wisconsin, in large part because the state of Wisconsin has the best workforce, not just in the region, but in the entire world. And we have an opportunity to really leverage that to get better and better jobs here in our state. Um, I also want to touch briefly on the horrible city comments. Um, I understand you were in the room, right? Do you have a sense of uh, what the former president meant by that? I was in the room. The president did not disparage the city of Milwaukee. I don't think he said what was attributed to him, but it was a conversation about the challenges we face in some of our nation's largest cities, including the city of Milwaukee. Just the other day, a nine-year-old boy was shot and killed on the north side of Milwaukee. The crime rate remains way too high. Huge challenges in the school district in the city of Milwaukee where they can't even provide their financial statements in any sort of a timely manner. And you can also look at the fact that we just recently had to replace the head of elections in the city of Milwaukee is an indication of the challenges that we face. And so democratic run cities across the country have really clobbered people that live there. That is something that we should be talking about and then talking about the policies that we can put in place to get people back up and on their feet and get this country back on track. Everything from school choice to controlling spending to securing the border. When we come back, United Way of Dane County held a summit of local CEOs to look at needs that can be addressed here in Dane County. We sit down with a panel of those local CEOs when we come back. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Madison Gas and Electric. I've heard AI is so easy to use, I had to give it a try for Stanton Optical's newest deal. Create a commercial selling one pair of glasses for $59. Hey, I said a pair of glasses, not a pair wearing glasses. Hmm, better, but it needs to pop more. Pop more, not popcorn. Oh, uh, forget it. <laughs> Maybe using AI to make an ad wasn't my best idea, but you can get the best deal on glasses right now. Book your eye exam today. Stanton Optical. Easy is our thing. Introducing Badgerscape Design and Landscape, your trusted full-service landscape company in the greater Madison area. We offer expert design, installation, and maintenance services. Visit BadgerscapeDesignAndLandscape.com to schedule a consultation today. I've been with U.S. Cellular for 27 years. They've always taken care of me. But when they asked me to talk to you about their special customer event, Us Days, I said, I gotta get in shape. So they sent me this Hollywood trainer. Oh, this guy's no joke. Hmm. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers. Now let's try burpees. Us Days is back at U.S. Cellular. Current customers get $1,200 off any phone, plus $300 off any tablet. Need inspiration? Shop Pick and Save. For over 30,000 mouth-watering choices, plus savings like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump. Pick and Save is worth it every time. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. We believe every baby deserves a healthy start. Yet many parents in our community are struggling to afford the basic necessities. You can help change that. Please donate to the News 3 Now Community Baby Shower. Drop off infant care items at Babies and Beyond, Monday through Friday and Saturday morning. Visit channel3000.com for complete details. News 3 Now Community Baby Shower, sponsored by Viridian Homes and Dave Jones. Join me in the 608 weekdays on News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back. Earlier this month, a group of local CEOs met with the United Way of Dane County for a summit to look at the needs in the Dane County community and how those local businesses can address them. And a panel of local CEOs joined us earlier in the week. Here's more from that conversation. All right, wonderful. And joining us now is Terrence Williams, President and CEO of True Stage, uh, Cheryl DeMars, CEO of The Alliance, and Larry Barton, President and CEO of Strang. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well. Excited to be here. So I understand you guys are on the heels of this CEO summit with the United Way of Dane County. Uh, what did we hear for that? Yeah, I mean, uh, let me start by saying it was the perfect timing uh, to have a CEO summit. Uh, this uh, came right at the beginning of our annual United Way campaign. And uh, through that, we've been reaching out to probably over 150 CEOs around the community, and we were having one-on-one -on -one conversations. And uh, typically, those conversations are 
are around uh, last year's campaign and how United Way's been using uh, the dollars and how they're spending their dollars. But uh, this year, uh, we had kind of a unique conversation with them. And we were talking one-on-one uh, -on -one about some of the challenges and some of the trends that we're seeing in the community that were somewhat alarming. And uh, even though we're, you know, recognized as one of the greatest places to live in the entire country, uh, we were hearing statistics that uh, we have over 10% of our population living in poverty. Uh, we have 600 homeless people. Uh, we were hearing we have over 20,000 people without uh, health coverage. And we were hearing uh, that food pantries for the first time in many, many years uh, were unable to keep up uh, with the demand. And uh, through United Way in general, we were even uh, hearing from the uh, requests for help that are coming in uh, that those requests had increased by over 80% just in the last year. Uh, so these were concerning. These were things that we were thinking, you know, could directly impact the quality of life here in our community. And in addition to that, uh, we recognize that over the past three years, we had uh, over 20% inflation. And uh, this was concerning because, uh, you know, the inflation seemed to impact housing, transportation, food, health, uh, health uh, costs, and uh, all of that really impacts the people that are living in poverty the most. Uh, so this was an interesting conversation, and when we were meeting with these uh, CEOs one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it, it caught their attention. And uh, it was very obvious that they wanted to help, they wanted to participate, and that really became the foundation for the conversations that we were having at that CEO summit. And they showed up in droves, mm -hmm. uh, literally filled the room. Uh, Cheryl uh, orchestrated a lot of that conversation. I'll let you share what you know about the results of that. But. Yes, so uh, the United Way brought us together. There were over 60 CEOs um, that came together to talk about the community. And we had conversations about what some of the what some of the issues are, what some of the obstacles are, what we as business leaders could do to make an, a positive difference. And also the role of the United Way as kind of a convener and catalyst and amplifier of the work that we're trying to get done in Dane County. And we left with a bias for action about what we could do as as individuals, as leaders of our organizations, and as members of the community. Terrence, this was your first CEO summit, I think. It was. Being new to the community. What yes. did you hear? You know, I was really, really excited because the, the challenges that we know exist um, are there. But how do we find ways from a business standpoint to unite, to create alignment, to collaborate, and to find ways to really drive solutions? Uh, so I left there energized about the opportunities as it relates to how we as, as business leaders can find ways to really make a difference and to do so in a coordinated manner. So that was, yeah. that was the piece that was the most exciting for me is I've lived in a number of markets over the past several years, and oftentimes there's a challenge to create alignment to get everyone on the same page to ensure that mm -hmm. here are the four, five, six big things that we're gonna focus on. And I left that meeting feeling really good about the alignment and the, the collaboration that lies ahead for all of us. So it was a good session. I think one of the things that um, fascinates me is just the raw numbers when you talk about 150 CEOs, 150 companies, and then 60 CEOs at the summit. A lot of Dane County has a connotation of um, it's dominated by you know state government, employment, and EPIC, right? But this is... Mm -hmm. uh, companies, CEOs from across the spectrum. Who are we talking about here? Um, it was really a, a wide variety of business leaders who share a commitment to um, making Dane County a great place to live and work and play, and also to, um, to a, a desire to come together to, um, to amplify what we're able to do. Uh, the nice thing about the event was uh, we had a lot of new CEOs that had recently uh, uh, come to the community and it was a chance for them to meet and to network and to learn about uh, what's working and what's not working and how they can participate. So it, it was great for that perspective as well. And you talk a lot about the collaboration that happens behind the scenes um, with companies who, you know, kind of live and work in Dane County. Um, what are some of those behind the scenes conversations look like that, you know, we may not be privy to in the public here? Right. Uh, 
There is so much work that's happening behind the scenes, uh, especially through the United Way uh, campaign itself. We talked about the initial reach out to 150 uh, different CEOs in the area. Uh, that list is actually a list of 300 uh, that get communicated with. Um, the campaign itself starts out with uh, 30 uh, executives from various companies and they in turn reach out to, to these 300 executives and, uh, and they talk about these issues and they talk about how they can help. Uh, in addition to all of that happening with the campaign, uh, there's a whole series of affinity groups uh, that is organized through United Way and uh, businesses collaborate with those affinity groups. Uh, those groups include uh, uh, groups like Women United, uh, groups, uh, there's a group called LINK, and uh, LINK is for young professionals that interact and deal with these, uh, these concerns. There's a group called READY, which is retired professionals. Uh, and there's a, a business volunteer network, which is another organization uh, through United Way that helps connect uh, the workforce with volunteerism. Uh, and that volunteerism is connected uh, very closely to the, the most urgent needs in the community, and that's why it's most effective. Um, fascinating, too. It seems like you've addressed a couple of the needs um, that we see here in Dane County, certainly. Um, it seems like a big effort to, you know, bite off a lot right. um, to chew. Uh, do you know essentially what the next steps might be? If we look at a summit, you know, five years from now, uh, do you know what we'll be talking about then? You know, my guess is it will focus on the um, plan for community well-being right. that the United Way has established. And this is a plan that was developed with and for the community. Mm -hmm. And it focuses on four pillars that uh, really are um, the biggest issues. Um, the first is youth opportunity, so ensuring that um, young children have an opportunity to reach their full potential. Um, financial security, ensuring that uh, we have people with job skills that will help them to uh, achieve family supporting jobs and reduce homelessness. Um, finally, our third, a healthy community, making sure that, um, that everyone has an opportunity to, to have optimal health and well-being. And finally, community resiliency. So how is it that we will not only address the most pressing needs today, but also pave the way for a better future? Wonderful. I was going to simply say that at, at True Stage, um, just kind of giving that lens of how we view these items, we try to narrow in on some very specific items that we believe link to the items that we're sharing here, but how do we find ways to contribute to make a difference there? So I'll, I'll kind of double click on a couple of those just to give you some examples of what I mean. Um, when you think about education and financial literacy, the importance of that, and, and how do we find ways to make sure that we're educating not just our youth, but we're finding ways to provide tools and resources to those who may not have, have been privy to or had access to the tools that allow them to really understand how to plan for the future. Another one is, is job readiness. And making sure that that we are preparing the workforce of the future and that we're doing things to ensure that that the the residents of Dane County are prepared to enter the workforce uh, based on just the changing uh, dynamics that you see taking place within the world of work these days uh, and then the last one that I would mention that everyone is having a lot of conversations around is homelessness and housing there are the housing situation in Dane County there is a shortage of affordable housing and when you look at the homelessness rates and how they've, they've increased, uh, an, a, another interesting statistic, uh, I believe about 40% of the homelessness population are African American. And yet, and yet African Americans represent about five or six percent of the total population. So how do we find ways to make sure that we're addressing those needs up front? Um, you know, we believe strongly in that any community needs to have a stable uh, situation as it relates to housing, because that's one of the foundational elements that everyone needs to be able to engage in, to be productive citizens. Um, so we funnel a lot of our resources through our foundation to programs and uh, items that really help to address those types of items. So it's, and again, they ladder up to all the things that we're talking about here to make sure that we are building for the future to make a difference. When we come back, more from our local panel of CEOs. We'll be right back after this. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, 
driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. Looking to buy or sell? Call Tommy Vaness Realty, First Weber's number one team, dedicating to making your real estate dreams a reality. At Tommy Van S Realty, we understand that buying or selling a home is more than just a transaction. It's about finding the perfect match for your lifestyle. Trust Tommy Van S Realty for all of your real estate needs. Why settle for less? Call Tommy Van S. Hansen's knows that your home is a place of comfort and protection. That's why our durable, energy-efficient, and weather-resistant windows, roofing, siding, and gutters, as well as our bathtubs and showers, are guaranteed. With over 30 years' experience and thousands of five-star reviews, we're your trusted home improvement expert. Get 50% off installation or enjoy no interest and no payments for one year. Call 1-800-HANSENS. Get it done. Want to instantly look more attractive and years younger? The solution is whiter teeth. But you love coffee and tea, maybe even wine or smoking. It's time you discovered Power Swabs. The first time I tried it, my husband was so excited. And he said, I can't believe how white your teeth are. From that point on, I've been sold. Power Swabs are guaranteed to whiten your teeth up to two shades after the first application. After five-minute daily treatments for the next week, your teeth will be an average of six shades whiter. Call this 4th of July to receive 50% off. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. The first warm weather team takes you beyond the barometer, only on News 3 Now. Welcome back. We continue our conversation here with our panel of local CEOs, picking up with that question of what more should people know and how can people get involved? I will say that the CEO Summit was a great opportunity to have these conversations and, and there were a lot of good ideas uh, that came out of those conversations especially. And uh, at the summit, uh, it was a working session. Uh, so uh, it's not just networking, it's not just getting community leaders together to get to know each other. It became an educational component where we talked about the issues. Uh, it became a uh, opportunity to share some of the resources that United Way has available that a lot of the people in the room didn't know about. Uh, an example is that uh, the United Way does have an affordable housing fund. And, uh, and that's for families that uh, need uh, uh, to seek a loan and uh, uh, need housing assistance. Uh, United Way runs a 211 hotline, and a lot of people didn't know about that, but that was just an excellent way to connect the people that need resources uh, with the resources that are available. And a lot of those pillars uh, that Cheryl talked about are derived from the areas of greatest need in the community. Mm -hmm. And United Way does a lot of uh, data research and uh, they monitor the, the numbers of calls that come in for help uh, through that uh, 211 service. So they get over 40,000 calls per year. And uh, that's how they prioritize what are the greatest needs in the community. Uh, housing is number one. Mm -hmm. Housing, rental assistance, food assistance, those financial things. Right. Uh, health uh, support is high on that list as well. Uh, behavioral health issues, uh, addiction, uh, dealing with just access to good quality health care, and the disparities in health care and the disparities in health outcomes. Uh, these are all things that through those pillars have been prioritized and we talk about them uh, together and it's a working session towards solutions. And uh, it's going to lead towards action. Definitely. And what the only add I would make to that is just what I appreciate about what I've been learning uh, here in Dane County is specific programs with meaningful outcomes. Yes. So you think about the ability to take a family who has an emergency need for shelter and to be able to give them resources to help them on an interim basis, to help prepare people to learn about the process for homeownership and what that means for them and how do they prepare themselves for homeownership in the future. Uh, the ability to take care of people during their uh, dire times of need. I just think that's significant, but it really is about programs that have meaningful outcomes that are addressing these needs that we know exist within our community, so. The other thing that impressed me is um, the data 
that United mm -hmm. Way collects and how their approach to assessing the needs of the community really relies on data and then directing the the contributions, the investments that we make as as donors to those areas of greatest need and then seeking ways to create collaboration, alignment mm -hmm. and measuring the results that we're getting. Right. We'll be right back after this. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2024. Vote for the Best of Madison online today, including Don's Home Furniture for Best Furniture, Best Interior Design, and Best Outdoor Living and Services. Vote for Don's Home Furniture today. My husband and I finally agreed that we need a new bathtub and shower. So he went right to work on handling the project. That's him going online researching bathtub and shower installers. And there he is, calling a few places to get an estimate. I think he's procrastinating. Call 1-800-HANSONS for a new shower or bathtub you'll love. Installed in as little as one day. It's okay. I called 1-800-HANSONS. We custom fit your new bathtub or shower into your existing space for a fast, convenient, and hassle-free installation with any safety features your family needs. Safety bars, seats, and more with a no-leak guarantee. Oh, hey, I'm going to call 1-800-HANSONS. That's great, hon. Get 50% off installation, or no interest and no payments for one year. Offer ends soon. Call 1-800-HANSONS, get it done. Apartments.com lets any landlord find qualified renters and sign leases and collect payments from any place, even here. And where's here? Isla de Rentada. <laughs> Apartments.com, the place to list a place. In the courtroom, we see Donald Trump for who he is. He's been convicted of 34 felonies, found liable for sexual assault, and he committed financial fraud. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's been working, lowering health care costs and making big corporations pay their fair share. This election is between a convicted criminal who's only out for himself and a president who's fighting for your family. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Welcome back. We leave you with this this morning. Tomorrow marks the two-year anniversary of the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Dobbs. Now, that's the decision that overturned the precedent set by Roe v. Wade. We broke the news last week that the Biden campaign is bringing Elizabeth Warren to Madison to hold events marking the occasion. And we are also quickly approaching the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee next month. We will continue to have previews this coming week. That does it for us this week. I'm Will Keneally. Have a great rest of your weekend.